Good morning, viewers. This morning, I'm joined by Mr. Tim Hanforth. Tim is the president of the Anakinish Rivers Association, and I thought we'd sit down and chat a little bit about some of the activities that are going on with the, the local rivers association as we ebb into the fall fishing season. Of a curious note, the temperatures got down last night, uh, four or five you. degrees. Yeah. I was speaking to Mr. Robert Chasson and the Marguerite, and he says the water is up there, so let's hope in the not too distant future, uh, the rain cooperates and, and we fill the bowl up and the salmon come. Well, I think we all have our fingers crossed for that. You got Jerry, yes. Excellent. Tim, a couple of things for our viewers. Can you tell me a little bit about yourself, your work history, your family history, and maybe about uh, your passion for fly fishing and all things salmon? Well, definitely could. Um, I grew up in Truro, Nova Scotia. I fished the Stuyak River when I was growing up and uh, the um, rivers along the north side of the Cobbequit Bay, the uh, be the Glen Home, the Portapique, the Economy Rivers. Okay. Um, I've caught river salmon in the uh, North River and Salmon River that flow right through Truro. And, uh, my father wasn't a fisherman. Um, we did have some good family friends that were fishermen and they were kind enough to uh, take me under their wing and show me the, the ropes to more or less and uh, I started fly tying when I was 13 that's the year I caught my first salmon and then two or three years after that I took up rod building and uh, you know I've enjoyed both passions ever since uh, you're a full package Tim full, you got it my friend uh, <laughs> back at you know Claire and I um, we did move out west in 1980. Uh, we moved back to Antigonish area in 2008. Um, during the time out west, I did a lot of you know, some hardware fishing. Uh, we caught some huge lake trout, pike, walleye. I also had a chance to get out the west coast, fish some steelhead and the large uh, Chinook salmon, coho salmon, um, fish the Bull River, uh, Elk River. So yeah, I, I've. Uh, actually fished every province in Canada and caught fish except for Manitoba so still on the bucket list st still on the bucket list yes so I know you worked as a project manager for St. of X for quite some time and and recently retired let's just talk a bit about retirement is it working for you oh it's working great Jerry I, I would <laughs> highly recommend retirement yes <laughs> as, a, as a person that yes. has most recently yes. retired myself yeah. uh, I'm in a similar frame of yeah. mind Let's move ahead a little bit here, Tim, and talk about some of the summer activities that the Anakinish River Association uh, uh, undertook this summer. Can you comment on that a bit? I can. Uh, we, we've had actually a very busy summer. Um, you know, it, it kind of started out in the early spring. We, we were able to hire a full-time employee, um, and uh, she has really been a great asset and helped us uh, get some funds for the Cameron Lake project which was you know so we have lots of money to do that project and uh, we're just waiting to get permission from the government it's a little co bit more complicated complicated than we'd hoped uh, we have done a lot of restoration on Briarly Brook uh, we've done approximately five and a half kilometers um, we've installed over a hundred structures those would be like bigger logs and uh, deflectors, deflectors and and sills. sills yeah all, Yes, um, all of the above, I guess. And the money for that actually came from the twinning of the highway project. Gotcha. Um, so we we're fortunate that way to uh, be the recep recipient of that. Um, so that's been kind of our main summer activity. Along with that, we, we've maintained all of our existing structures. I think we have about 250 existing structures. Um, I believe we'll be doing some graveling on the James River this year, some small pea gravel, which is good, you know, helps the spot for the spawning. Sure. So it's been fairly busy. Um, actually, probably one of our busier years. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There was a lot of moving parts this year. Yeah. Um, one of the other things I want to talk briefly ab about uh, it is the tough decision to cancel our biennial dinner. Uh, that was slated for October this year. Uh, I know our group, yourself and uh, myself and my co-chair, uh, Dave McNeil, sat down in, in the summer and, and discussed the pros and cons of, of running uh, our dinner. We're clearly aware that lots of people want to be here for it and, and are pining towards doing an event such as that, which is unique in the fact that 
Not only can they come and, and share all things salmon, trout, and, and river-wise, but get up the next morning and, and go fishing. Um, eventually, we, we decided to cancel. Can you comment on that just a wee bit? I can, and uh, I, you know, and I agree with you. It's been a big disappointment for everybody that it has been canceled. But I think um, it is the best decision at the time that we could make with the information that we had. And you know, I think um, right now we're seeing the fourth wave, you know, pretty pretty uh, evident in New Brunswick. We're seeing COVID creep back into the nursing homes, and I think it's uh, you know just the, the the whole risk and the COVID. Um, it, it's the right decision. You know, it's a lot of work to put the event on. We have to uh, work, you know, there's a lot of moving parts and to, to have to cancel it at the last minute would would, uh, would not be very good and, and would probably cost the, you know, our club a lot of money to do that. So I, I think it's- I agree. And, and ultimately that's yeah. how we arrived at that yeah. decision. And, and I think we were all on the same page when, when we thought about the effort to run it and then- yeah it being out of our control and having to cancel. Oh, 100%, yeah, 100%. So I will mention to the viewers, put it in your calendar for 2022, the first Saturday following Thanksgiving, will be our next uh, uh, dinner. Uh, more to come on that as we uh, plan towards it. With regards to activities and, and some of the things that, that we do in lieu of the dinner, which is our major fundraiser, uh, we're planning to do a few more activities this fall and through the winter. Let's chat a little bit about that, Tim. Yeah, um, you know, uh, the dinner has always been a major fundraiser for our organization. That's, that's kind of kept us going you know, for quite a few years. So without that, we do have to do a few other activities to raise some funds. Um, we will be having casting lessons with Neil Holding, Holdings uh, again this fall. and. Uh, if any of you did miss him last fall, I would really encourage you to participate in that. He is a great instructor and, um, you know, I, personally every year I do get a private lesson from Neil just to uh, tune me up a little bit, so to speak. Um, so we will be holding the, the uh, casting lessons. We will be uh, doing some, some evenings at Salmon Central uh, with a guest speaker and uh, just kind of get together and uh, talk about salmon fishing or fishing and river restoration in general. So that's always a, a good evening, a great evening, if uh, anybody wants to take play, a part in that. And uh, we will look at doing an online auction again sometime, you know, late April, early, or sorry, late March, early April. Last year it was a great success. Uh, we, we do appreciate everybody's input into that. and. Uh, you know, between those three activities, we seem to be able to generate enough funds to uh, to get us, uh, you know, to keep our restoration projects moving forward. Uh, that's a good overview, yeah. and and uh, I, I will comment on that just a, a little bit. Every dollar we raise, we're able to match it three or four times with uh, existing grants or NGO grants, and that's that's what funds. Uh, the active work that we do in the Anakinish River Association. So there'll be more to come on that. Pay attention in our newsletter uh, or our weekly video blogs that we're doing right now. A couple of other things that are related to that, Tim. Obviously, the Anakinish River Association ha has grown with its sophistication uh, in uh, hiring employees and getting the word out and website development. Um, we did a lot of things in, in 2021 in another COVID year. Do you want to just touch base on that uh, briefly? Oh, sure, Jerry. Yeah, it, this has been probably one of our busiest years ever. Um, in the spring, we did launch a new website. And uh, if any of you haven't had a chance to look at it, I would encourage you to do so. Um, we've upgraded the uh, river maps for the Anaganish, or the West River and the South River. Um, we actually had a cartologist uh, do that work for us, and it was just fantastic. We were really fortunate that way. But the website is just a, a whole different beast than it was before. It's very user-friendly. It is kept up to date by Allison, our full-time employee, and it's been uh, very well received. So if you haven't had a chance to, to do so, please go and have a look at our website. Um, you know, we have Dave McNeil on board. He keeps our Facebook page up to date, as well as does the uh, the Fall River blogs. Um, yeah, so it's been a, a 
you know, we, we've done a lot of things this year that we haven't done in the past. And Including our full uh, contingent of interns this summer. Correct. Yeah, and I think that's that's par par uh, partially um, through Nick uh, McGinnis and Allison, they were able to get some interns. And these are, are young people who are studying uh, environmental science of some sort um, at you know our, the Nova Scotia Technical Colleges, and that you know I've met them and worked along with them on the rivers, and they're just great people and a great asset to have. It's, it's been really a, a pleasure to uh, be able to help them out with their careers. So it's, it's been very positive. Uh, I think about a lot of things vis-a-vis uh, uh, -vis the wish list uh, mm. for ARA. Anything that's top of mind for you? Well, yeah, good rainfall right now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. well, well said, we are, we are locked <laughs> into uh, um, the 20s of yeah. October, so, or sorry, September. So obviously having some rain in the forecast would <laughs> yeah. be a wonderful thing. Yeah. As we close here, Tim, um, and I thank you for taking part in today's interview, uh, tell me a bit about your fall fishing plans. Yeah, well, you, you know, Jerry, um, the fall fishing is actually my favorite fishing. I love swimming the, the big flies or these big fall fish, and, and that's, that's probably my, my passion. But um, every fall, I, you know, I fish the, primarily fish the East River over by the Glasgow, the West River here, the Bedeck and the Middle Rivers. And uh, I know those four rivers really, really well. Um, and yeah, just totally enjoy fishing them. Quite often, you know, one river system will have be good fishing and the other river systems, you know, will not be. So if you can kind of work the systems, bounce around, fish them, it, it does help out uh, at the end of the season. Well, certainly that's one of the beauties of, of basing yourself out of Anikinish is the proximity to all of these rivers. Yeah. You can be to the Bedeck pretty quick or the middle or even yeah. the Forks of the Marguerite, not to mention uh, running up the line east and west of Pictou mm -hmm. County and uh, swinging a fly uh, on the Waz or the Phillip. Yeah, we're, we're very fortunate here in um, Anikinish and uh, you know, that, that's probably when Claire and I did look at moving back to Nova Scotia in 2008, that's you know why we did choose this area. It was very central and close to a lot of salmon fishing. So that, that definitely uh, weighed in on our decision as to, uh, to you know, where to move to. Terrific. So, 100%. Well, Tim, thanks very much for uh, uh, this conversation this morning. I look forward to seeing you on the river. Thank you, Jerry. You're Same. welcome. Yeah.